Good afternoon and welcome to Midday Live from our news up here at Adesawe Kanda Accra. I am Wendy Lai. Coming up this afternoon. Male pupils of Maupemo MA Primary School in the East Gonja Municipality continually abandon classes for fishing due to lack of teaching and learning materials. Boris Johnson on the international front. Boris Johnson denies wrongdoing over a Kuri link. Well, the details of these stories and many more lined up this afternoon. Please stay. Let's start with our stories now. And some women are set to be secretly doing family planning on the blind side of their husbands, although the decision lies with both partners. Isi Benua Oto reports women contend they want ample time for their lives and decision making as well. We bring you the story. Family planning is a method of controlling intervals between births and the number of children. The decision to plan a family ideally depends on both the man and the woman. My quest to find out family planning methods people opt for open up a can of worms. I caught up with two women who had visited a hospital for some injectable. The women would not speak on camera to protect their marriages. Yaki, not her real name, has three children and in a very emotional tone said, she is taking care of them all by herself and do not want to have any more children now. First, me wo baba o baba ko ni papa no on she no. I overwork because I have to take care of all three children. I am too tired. That is why I have to do this. I saw be ye juma bia. Me ko me ye juma sa anti ma bre e no tin na me pese me wo bia. For her, Na, also not her real name, has been on family planning for three and a half years now, without the knowledge of her husband. My husband is not aware I am on family planning medication. For now, I need to attend to a lot of things. I will give birth again at the right time. At the family planning section of the Achimota Hospital, the senior midwife officer, Perfect Yawa Agbenu, noted family planning among men is not encouraging, indicating women are their frequent clients. The women are far more, more than the men. Some people, their husbands don't want them to do their family planning. So if the depot, when you give a shot, nobody knows that she has come for anything. But, but the implant, because they want a long method, they normally tell their husbands that well, I'm coming to do this. Because in case they have, your husband holds your arm, he'll feel it there. So you have to inform him that you are coming for family, you are coming for this method. For her, proper health education is the solution. The education, you have to go to the communities with the opinion that they will tell them, we give health education talks, the churches. It depends. Everywhere that the men are got, we have to go there and then talk to them about family planning and explain to them. So normally, in the community, they say, they say, they say it did, the family plan is this, the family plan is that. So they don't want their wives to do it. But in case we have time or we can get somebody to go to the community and educate them, maybe all the, where the men are gathering, maybe the clubhouse, uh, where they play ludus and those things explain to them, maybe it will change one day. Family planning is one aspect of the targets around universal access to sexual and reproductive health found in the SDGs and to meet targets, perceptions and attitudes about family planning must change. Let's move on to other stories, but still related to health. And former Nigerian international Arsenal footballer Kano has urged Guineans to adopt a lifestyle of exercising their body in a bid to avoid heart attacks. He made a remark at a health walk and screening exercise organized to mark this year's World Heart Day in Accra. 
World Heart Day is the world's biggest awareness raising platform aimed at combating cardiovascular diseases and champion heart health equity. The 2019 campaign is about creating a global network of heart heroes, all inspiring each other by making and keeping a promise. The walk began from the cardio center of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital through some principal streets and back to the cardio center where a health screening was organized. Former Nigerian international footballer and ambassador for this year's World Heart Day, Wanko Kanu, advised Kenyans to exercise their body to avoid heart attacks. Keep the heart beating uh, so that you, you look fit and um, you don't have issues because uh, say prevention is better than cure. So the more you start this early, the better for you. Director of the cardio unit of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, Dr. Laurent Ajeman Serbo, observed that limiting intake of Western foods and avoiding tobacco could reduce heart-related diseases. We should desist from eating uh, food that, is, uh, that has a lot of fat. We should stop smoking. And smoking, as I said, is not only for cigarettes, people with cigars. And now, unfortunately, shisha has become very popular among the youth. You see, if you spend one hour smoking shisha, it is it's equivalent to smoking 100 sticks of cigarette. Wow. It is that deadly. The Casapreco company presented a check to support the hospital. The company believes in making profit all right, yes. But then the founder, Dr. Komneji, also believes much in giving back to our own selves as, as Ghanaians. So we definitely will continue supporting the cardio center. <laughs> on health this afternoon and the national blood center is meeting only 50 percent of the daily blood requirement for the kolibu teaching hospital this the center blamed on inability to attract regular voluntary blood donors meanwhile the synod moderator ep church presbyterian church reverend dr lieutenant kennel bdk Agbeko retired has urged christians to see voluntary blood donation as a biblical mandate Globally, blood transfusion has become a major requirement in healthcare, yet the product is not and cannot be produced scientifically for the purpose. The only way to get this essential consumable on a shelf for medical use is through voluntary donations. Unfortunately, efforts over the years in Ghana are unable to attract this support, compelling health authorities to continue to ration blood. A senior blood donor organizer at the National Blood Center, Stephen Danso, is worried. The safest and the surest way of um, obtaining blood for patients is regular voluntary blood donation. But currently, the situation is not good. Our voluntary collections are always below 50%. 55-year-old Celestine Jemesi has donated blood voluntarily for nine times. Her conviction came when her husband was taken ill and needed blood urgently. Statistics have shown that if 1% of our population donate blood on a regular basis, the acute shortages of blood that we experience will be a thing of the past. Abraham Dogwe was at a second voluntary blood donation exercise organized by the Meridian Presbytery of the EP Church this year. But if you have the money, the blood is not there. Your money will be there and there is no blood. So then you have to donate it for those who need it. The Synod moderator of the EP Church Meridian Presbytery, Reverend Dr. Lieutenant Kennel BDK Agbeko, retired, says being a Christian is incomplete without voluntary blood donation. By so doing, we are actually registering our love for humanity, sacrifice of what we have to help others as Christ did for us. Sylvester H. Naza leads the EP Church Meridian Presbytery Christian Youth Builders. Currently, we are in Greater Accra region. We are planning to go to other regions to do the drive. So I'm encouraging all the youth, let's organize blood donation so that when people need blood, they can get it easily. The National Blood Centre wants more from society to save lives. We want people to support us. So we are encouraging the corporate bodies that they should also continue supporting us. At least even if you have a team of 100 staff, and you invite us and we are able to collect 30. I think it will help a lot because our duty is to ensure the provision of safe blood and blood product. But without the raw product, which is the blood, coming from a donor, there's no way we can process the blood. The exercise at North La EP Church 
with attendance from the Greater Accra Regional Hospital and the Kolebu Tishin Hospital raised 123 units of blood. And we're still staying on healthcare, but away from blood donation. The Yendi Municipal Hospital has, for the last three years, drastically reduced maternal mortality cases from 14 in 2016 to 2 in 2019. They attributed a feed shock to their vision of, of zero mortality cases at the hospital. Here's a report by Zubeda Ismail. Speaking at the open day program organized by the hospital, medical superintendent of the hospital, Dr. Ayuba Abdullah, said the hospital, through collaboration with other organizations, has improved maternal care. He indicated the establishment of an ultra modern surgical intensive and neonatal care unit at the hospital is one of the reasons for the drastic reduction in maternal mortality cases. It's the duty of the staff at the various points units to provide continued education to all our clients that visit the facility. He also encouraged pregnant women to constantly attend antenatal and charged them to take their education serious. ANC pregnant women that come to the facility are entreated to prepare adequately before their due date by organizing basic items for the safety of themselves and for the safety of their inborn baby. He indicated the hospital will continue to deliver quality health care service to their clients. He appealed for cooperation from the general public to be able to achieve the needed results. However, from here in the construction work for the completion of a 60-bed Tyne District referral hospital has come to a standstill. The project was started during the late President Professor Evans Atemil's regime. The 10 district hospital was among nine other hospitals. $35 million was earmarked for the construction of the hospital. The project was designed to serve as a second referral hospital in the Den Bonahafu region and equipped with modern medical facilities that can facilitate good health delivery to people in the area. Regarded that due to administrative bottlenecks, including sourcing for funds, the completion period was deferred to 2018. Today, portions of the facility have been completed and others yet to. We were told that some unpaid staff are still on site. Our news team was denied access inside the structures, making it impossible for the team to get access to state of the modern medical equipment said to have been installed. To more stories this afternoon, government has presented 17 brand new pickup vehicles to the Ashanti Health Directories to boost healthcare delivery in the region. The vehicles worth 3.2 million cities will be used to support staff movement and deliveries of medical supplies. Concerns have been raised about the state of some dilapidated structures that school children study in, which pose as death traps across the country. Deputy Education Minister Dr. Yao Osei Educhum says the ministry has the goal of replacing all dilapidated school blocks to create a conducive environment for teaching and learning. In as much as we think children can learn anywhere, they should learn in the best of places. If they are truly our future, we cannot allow them to sit in buildings that are collapsing. So when the president took over the mantle of leadership, he set an agenda through the Minister for Education that is, replace all dilapidated buildings. Dr. Yao Edichum explains the projects are financed under the Ghana Education Trust Fund, Get Fund, and the district assemblies. In the Bosom Trade District, the Deputy Minister handed over four new six unit classroom blocks to six schools in the district. The schools are Edwabeng, Bonieja, Jachi, and Apenkro Primary Schools. The Bosom Trade District has also been selected among 30 local assemblies for the rollouts of the Right Age to School campaign by the Ghana Education Service and UNICEF. According to UNICEF representative Agnes Arthur, about 400,000 children are not in school. It was our responsibility to collaborate with government to make sure that we sensitize parents, communities, so that they send their children at the right age because of the benefits that it's uh, related to when you go to school at the right age. Dr. Yaosei Edichum said the right age to school campaign is to ensure school children benefit from early childhood education. 
Let's still focus on education and male pupils of Malpome MA Primary School at Quarter Quarter in the East Gonja municipality continue to abandon classes to engage in fishing. Lack of infrastructure, inadequate teachers, unavailability of teaching and learning materials have been blamed for their preferred choice. Here's a report by Christopher Amwaku. The Maufemo Municipal Assembly School was established by the community in 2008 and subsequently absorbed by the Ghana Education Service in 2012. Enrollment, according to school authorities, had been impressive, with at least 250 pupils each academic year since 2008, till the 2018-2019 academic year when it dropped to 107 pupils. The school, since its assumption in 2012, has never been given a facelift. A makeshift structure made up of three classrooms was never reconstructed after it was raised by a rainstorm in 2012. KG1, 2, Basic 1 and 2 pupils were moved into a church building which is not conducive for teaching and learning. Worse still, Basic 3, 4, Five and six pupils have classes in the open. More than 60 pupils in basic three, four, five, and six. There is no books. There is no uh, school uh, apparatus to be teaching the children. No approved books. Share six dual decks whose occupancy is determined by who arrives in school early. Stones picked around the compound are seats for the KG 1, 2, basic 1 and 2 pupils. There is always struggle when it is time to write notes or take exercises. A community member and a parent, Kojo Francis, is worried about the future of the awards. The school has a single trained teacher posted by the Ghana Education Service in 2015 but was not at post at the time the news team visited. He is assisted by a volunteer teacher. For some parents, their children are better off fishing than sitting in classrooms without adequate infrastructure and logistics. Our main occupation is fishing, and we take the children along every morning due to the poor state of their schools. There is no furniture, and they are also left at the mercy of the weather. The chairman of the Parents Teacher Association of the school, Jacob Awuza, revealed all protocols have been followed to get their challenges resolved but to no avail. The community, despite these challenges, is putting up a two-bedroom teacher's quarters for the only trained teacher posted to the school. Everything that we are offering, but why is it that if we are suffering for something, they can't help us? So we are begging government to come and help us. Goal 4 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which Ghana signed to, aims at ensuring equitable quality education and promoting long life learning opportunities for all by 2030. You're still watching Midday Live. The Ghana Prison Service is to establish water production facilities in all prisons across the country. The project, in collaboration with the Prison Support Foundation, aims at equipping prisoners with employable skills while creating avenue for revenue generation to augment the upkeep of prisoners. The initiative is by the James Camp Prison. It is also aimed at introducing the compass to natural mineral water. Compressed natural water, back up a gift of nature. Try it and see. The James Camp Prison here in Accra, since it marked its 70th anniversary last year, has embarked on massive drive to improve and enhance the reformation regime of the camp. The initiative which aimed at adequately preparing prisoners transferred to the facility prior to reintegration has been receiving tremendous support. The latest is the collaboration with the Prison Support Foundation leading to the commissioning of a natural mineral water production plant capable of producing 16,000 sachet water per day.
This followed series of tests conducted by the Center for Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR. This project to be commissioned was born out of the station's objective to transform the James Camp prison into the industrial hub of the Ghana prison service. Lead partner of Campus Natural Mineral Water Project, Isaac Apenting Yabua, assured of their readiness to extend the service to all prisons in the country. And we will help to achieve this through the training we intend giving to the inmates who are interested. We plan to support inmates who undergo such training by using a percentage of our profit to provide them with a start-up capital for their own water business when they leave this business. Chief Executive Officer of Eagle Management Institute, Richard Kwati Ahinkra, challenged the management of James Camp Prison to be business-minded. In the next five years, I want to see the campus competing with the big brands like the Baltic, like the Belacras, and etc. Patrick Dakumisa is the Director General of the Ghana Prison Service. The intention of Ghana Prison Service is to take advantage of the favorable business environment to enhance its economic generating activities as a result of abundant labor, fertile lands suitable for commercial agriculture. Deputy Trade and Industry Minister Carlos Ahinkra commended the collaborators, urging them to take advantage of the One District, One Factory initiative. If you enroll the incentives, you get a free tax holiday. Tax waiver, no income tax payment for five years. The facility currently produces 4,000 sachet water in eight hours. Let's now head to the Volta region where citizens of Alatle in the Keta municipality have initiated steps to construct a market, community center, road, and lorry park, in addition to the improvement of sanitation. Peter Kwadato reports the community earlier extended electricity and portable water to the area, built a community library and school block, among others. Alakbla, the predominantly fishing community with more than 6,000 inhabitants, is believed to be the oldest among the Anglo states. Like many rural communities in Ghana, most social amenities were non-existent until the National Management Council of the Alakbla Development Association took over. Through personal levies and other activities, the people facilitated the extension of electricity and portable water to the community, put up a community library, a classroom block and workshop for the junior high school. The inhabitants have again set out three projects, a market community centre and lorry park, which are to commence before the end of the year. Residents travel between 20 and 30 kilometers to Anglo and Dabala in order to engage in any trading activities. By undertaking these projects, the community hopes to attract commercial activities and to generate revenue. The National Council meeting in Accra adopted these proposals, including a bypass road project aimed at easing congestion in the main town. We realized that there was a need for us to come together, help ourselves, to move the community ahead. And even we are doing currently a road, which will be a bypass road to town. The community has again taken the fight against open defecation and sanitation seriously. So we've already started the move. We've initiated moves to get the community clean. So we even put up some toilets ourselves, at least. I can say comparing to other communities around. Alakla is also very clean. Togbi Amezegu II is the Dufia of Alakle. I will use this uh, platform to invite all Alakle indigents on board. This is a very uh, laudable project. We seek their support. Everybody should come on board, contribute your widow's might to this very project. Togbi Amezegu further extended an appeal to the Keta Municipal Assembly corporate Ghana, NGOs and philanthropists to help complete the project on schedule. In other news, the United Progressive Party plans to maximize the economic and medicinal potential of weed when voted to power in 2020. The party says it will legalize and encourage the commercial production of the narcotic substance as an avenue for revenue generation and job creation. 
Addressing the media in Kumasi, acting flag bearer of the United Progressive Party, UPP, Kenneth Nanakwami Asamwa, said the party's decision to legalize weed is not to encourage more people to smoke it, but to prevent smuggling and rake in revenue through exports. We are going to put in place a stretches. We are going to issue alliances for whoever is willing. Like the weed farm, we will give you a license, we will set an offices. So let's say if you have a land about four acres and you use that four acres to plant weed, the officers will know. So at the end of the day, it's not that you are going to smuggle it anywhere. We already know. If you do that, you are going to be charged and prosecuted. Because government is going to be the sole owner. He also spoke about the party's plan to establish what it refers to as seniors' home. For it to read. What they have now is affordable houses. What we are bringing in is senior homes. Senior homes contain nurses. Nurses will take care of the seniors that will qualify for that houses. They will be there with a cheaper price. That house is not for sale. It's for rent. Rent alone. The acting flag bearer noted the UP government will not only borrow money to establish factories to address the high unemployment rates in the country. Meanwhile, the party has confirmed the dismissal of its founder, Kwesi Adai Odike, for what it described as gross misconduct to its constitution. The National Association of Local Authorities of Ghana has launched a campaign to get at least 30% of women elected in the upcoming district assembly elections. The move is geared towards elevating women to the decision-making table to influence national policies and programs. The United Nations recommends a minimum of 30% women representation in local assemblies, but Ghana is currently hovering around 4.5%. For NALAG, women's equal participation and representation in decision-making processes is critical for prioritizing women's practical needs. To address representation deficits, the association has launched a campaign to get more women elected in the upcoming district level elections in December. Nalak believe that to realize meaningful and lasting changes in women empowerment and equality, it is fundamental to provide women with continual opportunities for capacity development in decision and policy making process. He called on women to avail themselves and contest the election. Former president of Nalak, George Chebafo, is worried the elected population of women in local assemblies keep dwindling. Women constitute majority of the population. Major decisions affect their everyday lives. But in practice, when it comes to t making the decisions, it's like we relegate them to the background. Women advocacy groups have been tasked to intensify efforts to build the capacity of women to be able to take up the challenge. You still watch your media live. There's more shortly. Thanks for staying. You're still watching Midday Live. Let's look at some more stories this afternoon. And former President Jerry John Rawlins has accused some leaders of the NDC of being on a wild goose chase because they know they could only take over the rulership of the country, perhaps in 2024 and not 2020. It was addressing national cadres of the party in the Ashanti region. Former President Rawlings was speaking at the Conference of National Cadets of NDC in Kumase. The conference, attended by cadets from all 16 regions, was under the theme Effective Mobilization and Organization for Victory 2020, the Role of Cadets. But the party's founder says it will not be easy for the NDC to win power in 2020. There are some amongst us in the leadership who initially didn't think, you know, after four years you can wrestle power from these people. And yet, if I may speak frankly, I've gone ahead and almost purchased the power of this party into their pockets and claiming 
to be aiming towards 2020 when I know, when some of you should know, that their aim is not really towards 2020. You secure 2020 out of the way for yourself so nobody will, will you will be the whatever knowing damn well that you just give it from full what you call it to pass through when you know 2024 is your target. The former president also called on leaders of the party to embrace the politics of conscience, truth and the power of conviction to regain power. He said it is important for the party to institute corrective measures to undo the mistake leading to the loss of the 2016 election. A leading member of the NDC, Professor Joshua Alabi, noted the history, strength and survival of the NDC have always hinged on the power of conviction. When we were leading the mobilization and organization of our party, we were not talking, we were not asking for money. We were moving everywhere. And you could see that from the results come 1992, 1996. But as the money backs came in, the system started moving backwards. I believe what we want to do is to ask ourselves what were we doing and what can we do to bring back our party and to make sure that we put in discipline and sanity in the system. Former Eastern Regional Minister Enki Buisiako Sechere said the failure of the NPP government to deliver on the economic goods offers opportunity for the NDC to wrestle power from the ruling party. All right, from that story, an estimated 20% of Ghana's annual budget allocation is lost through corrupt practices. According to the Deputy Commissioner Richard Quaison, for every amount government spends on procurement activity, the country loses over 30% through corruption. The Deputy Commissioner of Schwaj was addressing the National House of Chiefs on measures instituted by the Commission to fight corruption. Government has introduced a number of legislation and policies in public procurement and financial management to check graft and ensure value for money, control expenditure and boost transparency in the public sector. But the country continues to be saddled with corrupt practices. It is argued that money lost through corruption could be about 200% more than all the foreign aid the country receives in a year. Deputy Commissioner of Schwarz, Richard Quaison, says the amount of money lost through corrupt activities could have helped propel social economic growth. About 20% of our national budget is lost through corruption. Indeed, it's also estimated that for every amount of government expenditure on procurement activities, we lose about 30% of the amount through corruption. That means that if the government of Ghana invests 1,000 cities in any project, it gets only 700 cities value for the project, which is not really good for us as a people. Richard Quaison appealed to the public to support the fight against corruption. There are many people who do not think, believe that corruption it's what is denying them of good drinking water, education, etc. So one of the key ta targets of the National Anti-Corruption Action Plan is to build the capacity of the public and make it difficult for them to now accept corruption as normal. President of the National House of Chiefs, Togbe Afede the 14th, observed the country is not demonstrating enough commitment towards the fight against corruption. Corruption is the key, the key, the key, number one standing block to our progress. That is why we can't fund our schools. That is why we can't fund our health sector. That is why we can't build our roads. And that is why even this house cannot be funded. In other stories, Vice President Dr. Mohamed Baumia has charged the Ghana Armed Forces to redouble its intelligence gathering efforts and sharpen its readiness to be able to deal with threats of terrorism. The Vice President made the call when he joined the men and women of the Ghana Armed Forces at the 2019 Army Week celebration here in Accra.
The celebration, which is often characterized by fighting drills, foot and rifle drill formations, provides the armed forces the opportunity to showcase some of its activities to the civilian population. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia said government will continue to provide the armed forces the needed resources to enhance its work. The government has embarked on projects in the areas of housing, provision of equipment and training to ensure that the morale of the troops and their dependents always remain high as they go about their duties. The barracks regeneration project that's upon by the government. It's ongoing. And very soon, your accommodation challenges will be a thing of the past. I wish to assure you the government will continue to work closely with the military high command to ensure that your logistics and operational needs, including equipment, clothing, and accommodation, are adequately met on time for both your internal and external operations. He urged them to work hard to improve on intelligence gathering efforts to effectively combat threat of terrorism. Our sub-region is faced with the serious problem of terrorist activities. Our neighbors are presently battling jihadist movements. The threat is moving closer home and we are putting in place measures to effectively deal with those threats. We should therefore redouble our intelligence gathering efforts and sharpen our readiness in order not to be taken by surprise. The government on its part will do all within its means to ensure that you get the necessary training and logistics required to carry out your counter-terrorism operation. The Vice President later commissioned an army office complex to accommodate Army Headquarters staff at Burma Camp in Accra. The edifice comprises 37 offices, three conference rooms and a kitchen. The Vice President also cut the sword for the construction of an ultra-modern Army Headquarters complex. The Ministry of Gender Children and Social Protection has launched a rapid response center at Agbebloshi and Medina Markets here in Accra to complement efforts by the Domestic Violence Unit in fighting gender-based violence in the country. Sarah Paku has more. The establishment of the center follows a training exercise for selected executives of the market women to equip them with knowledge about domestic, sexual and gender-based violence. It is also to enable them respond to such issues at the market. Statistics show 33 to 37 percent of women have ever experienced domestic violence in the form of intimate partner violence in their lifetime. According to the Domestic Violence Unit, the number of reports of gender-based violence at the police stations has dwindled for fear of being victimized, hence the need to bring the service to their doorstep. The center is to readily assist the young and adolescents who are vulnerable about their rights to report such incidents. Executive Secretary at the Domestic Violence Secretariat of the Gender Ministry, Malonia Asibi, is confident the center will achieve its purpose. People have issues with the home and then they, they, they are forced to come the next day to sit here and sell. But they don't have the peace of mind to even do what they are expected to do for their livelihood. And most of the time, they, they are not confident enough or brave enough to even walk across to this police station to report anything. And they, they just keep it inside themselves. And so we intend to have this center here so that when these issues come up, one can easily and confidentially just walk in here and report. Queen Mother for the Medina Market, Messi Yabua, was grateful to the ministry for the establishment of the center at the market. The young ones are unable to go to the police stations to report cases of abuse. Those that are beyond us, we will send it to Dovsu. 
yes um our way to the agbogloshi and madina markets were identified as two major markets in the capital with high rates of reports on gender-based violence you're still watching media live there's more shortly Center Kids has won the prestigious Chartered Institute of Marketing Awards as a television program of the year 2018. This was announced at the 30th CIMG Awards held in Accra. The winner for the TV program of the year 2018, ladies and gentlemen, TV3 Talented Kids. Media General's TV3 flagship reality show for children has been on the airwaves for 10 years. The CIMJ TV program of the year 2018 has been an icing on the cake for all kids in the country. Kenneth Nanado is head of entertainment, events and lifestyle at Media General. It's a great honor and a pleasure to be here tonight. And uh, of course, um, TV3 Talented Kids has over the years uh, done tremendously well by unearthing great talents. And of course, I want to first of all dedicate this award to all the talented kids in Ghana. And uh, of course, the, those who have won the competition and those who are yet to win. Talented Kids goes beyond entertainment. Talented Kids is a, is a multi-skilled platform. We have uh, judges or people counselors and people around who help to actually mentor the kids, who counsel the kids. Uh, sometimes when the kids even are not psychologically ready, they counsel them because they come from far and near to be part of it. So they need to be psyched properly. And so by the end of the competition, you can see growth in this case. You can see maturity in this case. And that is what Talented Kids stands for. The awards have certainly set the bar even higher, but Media General's TV3 promises to outjump the bar. Congratulations to the team and we'll move on to more entertainment stories this afternoon empowered by 3FM 92.7 and pop musician Kelvin Boy Opanka and Famia thrilled audience at the 2019 Campus Rocks Aquaba Nights Jam at the University of Ghana Campus Lego. Now here is an update of how the show went down. <laughs> Central cafeteria at the University of Ghana campus came to a standstill with new inmates being officially introduced into the university community. We talk about Fwaba Night, what is it? It is an educating, motivational and entertaining program. But then this year, we actually changed the face of it. It, it, it turned into a little bit of education and then a big motivation for my honorable members and then the entertainment was massive. Powered by the 3FM 92.7 Campus Rocks Aquaba Night Jam, treated audience to a range of musical jams from some of Ghana's fast rising artists. <laughs> Bass rapper and wedding car hit maker Opanka was just on point. On that note, we end midday live. Thanks so much for watching. I am Wendy Lai. Remember, News 360 is at 7. We have Ghana's Most Beautiful as well. Till then, enjoy the rest of our programs. Do have a lovely Sunday afternoon.